Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce you to sketching modulus equations and for this video it's going to be really helpful if you're already familiar with what the modulus function does. And so if you're not, I'll link the video I've made on that in the description so you can go watch that video then come back and see this one. And so the way we're going to look at this is by looking at some equations of straight lines, adding the modulus function to them and seeing how this changes the graph of the line. And so we'll start off with a very easy example that hopefully you can already do, which is sketching the line y equals x plus 3, which is going to be a straight line, gradient 1, that passes through the y-axis at the point 3 and the x-axis at the point negative 3. And so this is going to look something like this. This will be y equals x plus 3. So now I'm going to put the modulus function around the whole equation, basically around my whole function. And I want to see how this is going to change the equation or the graph of the line. OK, so we're going to add the modulus function like this. And so if we do that, let's take a look at what's going to happen. Well, let's first very briefly uh, remind ourselves of what the modulus function does. So we say the modulus of x outputs x if x is greater than or equal to 0. And it outputs negative x if x is strictly less than 0. And so from that, hopefully you can see, well, all of these points that are above the x-axis, okay, which are positive, well, they're going to remain exactly as they are, okay, because inside the modulus, they're already positive. And so to demonstrate this, let's pick a point, say, x equals negative 1. Well, we have y is equal to negative 1 plus 3, or the modulus of that, which is then going to be equal to the modulus of 2, and so the output remains as it is as 2. This changes, however, if we pick a point that is below the x-axis, say this point here, where x is negative 4. We have y is equal to the modulus of negative 4 plus 3, which is then going to be equal to the modulus of negative 1, and so it's going to become positive 1. And so you can see, for the, all of the points that are above the x-axis, they're going to remain exactly as they are. However, if we pick a point that is below the x-axis, well, they can't be negative, and so we're going to multiply them by negative 1, and they're going to become positive. And what's happening is they're being reflected in the x-axis. And so if we were to reflect all of those points that were below the x-axis, well, we'd have negative 4, positive 1, negative 5 would become positive 2, and so on. And if we sketch the line y equals the modulus of x plus 3, it's going to look something like this. And so the equation of this part of the line, well, that's just y equals x plus 3, because it remains exactly as it was before. But the equation of this part of the line, well, we've multiplied all the points through by negative 1. That's what the modulus function tells us to do. And so the equation of that other part of the line is going to be y equals negative x subtract 3. And so we've multiplied whatever was in our modulus by negative 1. Let's take a look at another sort of outcome or another scenario we could have. And in this one, we've just put the modulus around the x. Okay, So we've got y is equal to the modulus of x plus 3. And so let's take a look at what's going to happen with this line. So again, let's look at some points, OK? So let's look at where x is equal to, say, 2. We would have y is equal to the modulus of 2 plus 3, which is going to output 5. Well, that's going to remain exactly where it is. Let's take a look at another point, this point where x is equal to 1. We've got y is equal to the modulus of 1 plus 3, which is equal to 4. Again, the line remains exactly as it is. What about this point here, where x is equal to 0? y is equal to the modulus of 0 plus 3? Well, that's equal to 3. Again, the graph is remaining exactly as it is. This is going to change, however, when we look at the point where y, uh, x is equal to negative 1. So y is equal to the modulus of negative 1 plus 3. This is going to output 4, whereas in the original line, the output was 2. OK, let me get rid of some of these lines because it's getting a bit confusing. So this point here where x is negative 1 and y was equal to 2 has now become x equals negative 1, y equals 4. Let's take a look at one more point. So y is equal to, say, when x is negative 2, the modulus of negative 2 plus 3, which is equal to 5. And so the new point on this line is going to be up here. And so hopefully you can see what's happening is the equation is being reflected in the y-axis so that all of my positive values of x are being reflected in the y-axis. And the reason for this is, well, we're taking the modulus of just x, and so all of these negative values of x that we had are becoming positive. And so the equation, or the graph of my line, is just being reflected in the y-axis for all the positive values of x. And so we can sort of generalize these rules like so. We could say that, well, if we put the modulus around our whole function, the negative f of x values are being reflected in the x-axis. And if we look at the mod f of the modulus of x, then the graph of x is greater than or equal to 0 is going to be reflected in the y-axis. And let's sort of look at this more with one more sort of example question. 
And so here we've been given the function x plus 2 all multiplied by x minus 3, which is a quadratic, and so it's going to be a parabola. And we want to sketch y equals f of x. Well, this is going to be, again, a parabola which passes through the points x equals negative 2 and uh, x equals positive 3. And if we set x equal to 0, we find that the function passes through the y-axis at negative 6. And so I can draw sort of a rough sketch of this. It's not perfect, and it's going to look something like that. So now if I want to sketch y equals the modulus of f of x, well, it's around the whole function. And so all the negative values, or the values that are below the x-axis, are going to be reflected in it, and they're going to become positive. So these parts here, well, they're already above the x-axis, so they're going to remain as they were. However, all of this point down here is going to be reflected in the x-axis. And so this point here, where it crosses through at negative 6, is now going to cross through at positive 6. And we're going to get a graph that looks something like this. And this would be y equals the modulus of f of x. Let's take a look at the final example, and I'll remove this old working out to stop it getting too confusing, where we want to sketch y equals f of the modulus of x. And if we remember, well, this is just a reflection in the y-axis for all the values of x that were greater than or equal to 0. And so this part of the graph is going to remain exactly as it was, and it's going to be flipped in the y-axis and look now something like this and pass through the point x equals 3 because it's symmetrical. Okay, let's look at probably sort of one more question that is the hardest that you might come across. And here we need to sketch the graph y equals the modulus of x plus 3 subtract 4. And so the reason this is a bit trickier is because we're not just got a modulus of x plus 3, we've then sort of transformed it by lowering it down by 4. And let's see how we can sketch this. Well, we've got sort of a straight line graph. It's a linear graph because we've just got a y equals sort of x plus something. And so that means this graph is going to have a vertex. It's going to take this sort of V shape. And so it'd be useful if we could find the coordinates of the vertex, which is sort of the lowest point. Well, that's really easy to do because the graph is going to take its lowest point when whatever is inside my modulus is equal to zero, because then we just get left with this negative four. Anything else is going to add on to that negative four and make it larger because we can't have a negative value because it's in a modulus. So we're only going to be adding to it. So it's going to take its lowest point when whatever is in my modulus is equal to zero. And so that's when X is equal to negative three. So we've got at negative three, which is this point here, the graph is gonna take its lowest point, which is y equals negative four. So we can plot that on here. We've got negative three, negative four is the point of my vertex. It would also be useful if we could find where the graph is gonna pass through the x-axis, which is when y is equal to zero. So we need to solve zero is equal to the modulus of x plus three, subtract four. So how can we do this? Well, let's think, say this is the V shape it's gonna take. That's gonna be two solutions. And so we're going to have one solution where we just ignore the modulus. If we go remember what we looked at right at the start, we had one where if we actually go to it, where we ignored it, like this part here, where we just had, well, ignore the modulus signs. And then we had another one where we multiplied the modulus through by negative one, and that gave us the other equation of the line. And so we're going to do the same logic here. Okay, so we're going to have one where we have zero is equal to x plus three, subtract four, and another one where zero is equal to negative x, subtract three, subtract four. And so solving these, we're going to get that x is going to be equal to positive 1. And solving this one, we get x is equal to negative 7. Finally, we might want to know where it passes through the y-axis. And I'll plot those other points on, so negative 7 and positive 1. We might want to know where it passes through the y-axis. Well, that's going to be when x is equal to 0. And so that's when we set x equal to 0. So we get y is equal to the modulus of 3 subtract 4, which is just going to be equal to negative 1. And so now if we put all of this together, we get a, a straight line graph that looks something like this. And we've sketched that uh, modulus equation. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share. And go over to my channel for tons more math tutorials. And thanks for watching.